Um, under school board admin matters, I have um, several items I'm going to be passing out. The first one is the agenda for our retreat this summer. So I'll go this way. <laughs> Let's keep passing them around. Should be two left over because uh, Mrs. McLeod is not here this evening. She's out of town for um, a work assignment. And Mrs. Uh, Holt is um, absent for the for the workshop, but she plans to be here for the 6 o'clock meeting. Um, also, I'll be passing out committee assignments. And this is a draft, by the way. This, these committee assignments are a draft, so, so if there's any, any changes to be made, please let me know, and we'll see if we can work something out. I meant this. Oh, and the <laughs> this is also a draft. The, uh, the agenda for the summer uh, retreat is also a, also a draft, so just so everybody knows. Um, I'm also passing around... An RSVP if you plan to attend the VSBA um, conference, 33rd annual uh, conference in Richmond on July 17th. Just check yes or no. Um, I'll pass that around. And I think that's it for things that I'm passing around at this point. Um, I want to remind everybody that. Um, the graduation parking passes are, should be probably on the dais. Is that right, Ms. Alvin? They're on, they're on the dais, but make sure you take that with you and make sure you have that, um, be able to show that in the front of your car when you go pass, go park um, this, in the next couple of days. Um, and also, we have a technical staff person that will be here from now on at all of our workshops in case we have any trouble getting online or getting our devices hooked up, whatever. We plan to have somebody here. Um, so a person is here, I'm not sure who that is right now, but <laughs> we have a staff person. If you have any trouble, let us know. We have a technical staff person that can help us and they will be here through our workshop and uh, before our formal meeting. Um, and then next I have under admin matters, I have a congratulations in order this evening. As, as you all are aware, Mrs. Dr. Amy Cashwell was chosen as the new superintendent for Henrico County Schools, and we want to congratulate her and thank you, Dr. Cashwell, for all the years of service you have given to Virginia Beach. You, have, uh, I think, knew it was a, a matter of time before somebody got you because you are so talented and. and you know, you're, you're going to be such an asset for Henrico, but we applaud you and <laughs> and we want you to know that we are definitely going to miss you. Yes. You're welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> you all will be missed as well. Thank you. Um, if I could just to add briefly to that, yes. just to uh, put the board at ease, we will continue to have leadership at the helm. Um, <laughs> I will be sending um, a note out about this, but um, Dr. Hughes will be stepping in as interim CAO until such time as we can fill the position. We'll be posting the position shortly, but Leslie will be working with Amy to make that transition happen. So just wanted to make you all aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I just need to clarify that we will have one of our, we have to have one of our closed session items this evening. There's actually three items that we're going to be discussing for in closed session, but one of them we have to do before our formal meeting. So, uh, that being said, um, we will try to either get to, get to the closed session by 515, but what will, if not, then we'll definitely try to get to it by 530, no later than 530. 
we will vote in here to go into close and then we will go to 113 and have the close uh, session um, along with our dinner break. So um, that is the plan for this evening. Is there anyone else who'd like to bring anything up during admin matters? Um, I do. Yes, Ms. Melnick. Um, I attended Kellum High School's um, senior awards day, as I'm sure many of you did at many schools, but um, although I went as a parent that day, um, I also went um, with a different frame of mind, and that was, are we honoring our kids? After the last conversation that we had, um, are we honor honoring our kids, and are we still competitive? Are there still a lot of great things going on? And, and the answer is yes and yes. Um, Callum High School um, was awarded over $9 million in scholarships, and they accepted about $5.6 million. And I think it's important to note that and to say that the competition was was stiff, and uh, that was that was mentioned as well. And I am incredibly proud of, um, of our students. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Ms. Williams? Um, yeah, about six of us went to the safety, um, the school safety presentation by some of our fifth graders at Kimskill. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Meadows. Yeah, 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 yeah Kimskill, great. Meadows, and it was just very, it was great. They had 19 different groups to um, mm -hmm. present to the school board their thoughts about how we um, can make our schools safer. Mm -hmm. safer. And then also I went to the solution to pollution um, Solution to Pollution Summit at SeaTac Elementary, and I was on the environmental um, panel. And again, the students were um, telling the panel how we can keep our oceans um, cleaner and you know, cut down on, on pollution and reuse and recycle and all that good stuff. So it was a great, and, and several of our teachers, the teacher at Callum High School was there, and, and several of the people from the, from the school system participated. So that was a great panel. So thank you to those two elementary schools. This is right. I just need 30 seconds. Um, I thought it would be nice to acknowledge, uh, in fact, the last one is tonight, but the Academy uh, Baccalaureate Creed Ceremonies or whatever names we give them, uh, the series that have taken place over the last week, just a, a shout out, a salute to, uh, to our Academy directors for all they do and, and to see the uniqueness of each of these that comes through in these uh, these end of your ceremonies is really pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Felton? I just had to mention that I also attended um, a event by the Golden Fold. It is that the Golden Fold is a, a send-off from the um, 200 plus men. And I just had to say, I'd like to do a, a thank you to Dr. Parrott, who spoke really well. She was the commencement speaker and actually what was happening, they celebrated for seniors from um, Tallwood, Green, Green Run, and uh, Green Run Collegiate. So four of the young men were celebrated and Dr. Perry did a wonderful job as commencement speaker there that night. Thank you. And just one more thing about um, the agenda, the for um, the summer retreat, if you if you have look it over, if you have any questions or concerns, you can either email Dr. Spence and me and uh, or and Joel and um, you know let us know. Uh, we can actually talk about it more at our next meeting if you wanted to have any discussions about it. Um, we're a little bit tight on time this evening, but um, other than that, I think we're ready to move on. Dr. Spence, free kindergarten update. Pre kindergarten update. Yep, thank you so much for that. We um, are excited about not only the work we're doing to expand full day kindergarten in Virginia Beach, but also the work that we're doing to expand pre K op options and opportunities. And you're going to learn a little bit more about how that's going and what's happening with the curriculum, and I think meet a few of these young people tonight. So, to turn it over to Dr. Cashwell. All right, good evening. Um, as Dr. Spence said, we're excited to have an opportunity to have you here. Um, about our pre-K world, not only from our administrators and teachers, but also from some young people themselves. So we're, we're really excited about that. Just for some context, would want to remind the board that Virginia Beach City Public Schools has taken advantage of the Virginia Preschool Initiative funding um, from the state 
um, as well as providing that local match for a number of years. And up till about two years ago, we were using, we were contracting those <coughs> services through the YMCA um, through their early discoveries program. So two years ago, uh, we came to you and let you know that we were shifting the way um, we were going to manage those funds and rather than using the YMCA as a contractor, and they were an outstanding partner to us, by the way, um, we knew that we would be able to maximize <coughs> and create potentially some more opportunities for preschool within Virginia Beach City Public Schools by making that transition. So um, Dr. Leslie Hughes um, with, with Tina Alsop, Director um, of Title I and Pre-K, worked to create a transition plan two years ago from the YMCA to Virginia <coughs> Beach. And they're going to, now that we have concluded two successful years with pre-K, give you an overview of, of where we've been and where we're going and the opportunities we've been able to provide for students um, as a result of taking that on in-house. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Hughes, our Executive Director of Elementary Teaching and Learning, and Ms. Tina Alsop, our Director of Pre-K, and they will introduce many other guests who are here from our um, Pre-K team as well as some school administrators and students. So. Turn it over to them. Okay. As Dr. Cashwell said, I'm Leslie Hughes, the Executive Director of Teaching and Learning, and with me is Tina Alsop, and together we're going to present the board with an update on pre-kindergarten. So to begin, let's just return to the purposes of pre-kindergarten, which in the simplest definition is designed to better prepare our youngest learners for school, which is often perceived to simply be early academic readiness. While it is true that children at this age begin to develop academic skills, Pre-K instruction extends well beyond the academic domain and dives deeply into the emphasis of teaching the whole child. Pre-K students learn to interact with each other and the world around them, while at the same time learn how to acquire an understanding of their own thoughts and emotions. Social emotional experiences are key at this developmental age and have a direct impact on the overall development of students as they become lifelong learners. But as we know, all families may not have access to high quality pre-K experiences for a variety of factors. Data indicates children who enter kindergarten without effective pre-K experiences and who are also exposed to other external risk factors uh, may, may not enter school with the same experience as, and may be at a, at a disadvantage from their same age peers. This may result in children beginning kindergarten without the academic and social emotional skills necessary to show a foundation for future academic success. As Dr. Cashwell said, VBCPS leverages multiple funding sources to provide a high quality pre-K program for our at-risk students. So currently the pre-K program is funded through the Virginia Preschool Initiative, the Virginia Preschool Initiative Plus, a required local match and Title I funds. So again, as Dr. Cashwell said, you may recall that Virginia Beach has always provided this pre-K program for our at-risk families by accessing state grant funds. In fact, for over 20 years. In the past, pre-K services were provided through the YMCA and that program was known as the Early Discoveries Program. But beginning in 2016-2017, Virginia Beach Schools took over management of that pre-K program and maximized multiple funding sources and really with the biggest bonus being that we could hire licensed and fully endorsed pre-K teachers and teacher assistants. So looking ahead to next school year, VBCPS will serve 853 students in a total of 48 classrooms. So at this time I'm going to turn the presentation over to Tina Alsop who will explain what learning looks like in the pre-K setting. Now let's take a moment to examine four critical areas that assist in ensuring students receive high quality pre-K experiences. Those areas are <coughs> curriculum, community partners, field trips and outreach, and family engagement. Let's begin with the pre-K curriculum, which is locally developed and focuses on the holistic development of the young child to include the domains of cognitive, social emotional and physical growth. Utilizing the VDOE standards for pre-K known as the Virginia Foundation Blocks for Early Learning, pre-kindergarten VBOs were created to guide the daily instruction in the classroom as well as to align to the continuity of kindergarten learning objectives. 
Teachers are provided continuous support for effective classroom instruction through consistent professional development opportunities and coaching by the pre-K resource teachers who utilize the VPCPS instructional coaching framework. In addition to the pre-K curriculum, VBCPS partners with the community to ensure our earliest learners have access to the world around them. While this list is certainly not exhaustive, some examples of our partners are the City of Virginia Beach's Grow Smart program organizes Read Across America for all pre-K students. CHKD provides free parent classes and attends our monthly family meetings. The noblemen provide resources for our families, especially during the winter season. And the Virginia Beach Library Program provides monthly on-site literacy <coughs> resources that are aligned to the pre-K curriculum. Pre-K students are provided with opportunities for field trips and outreach. Each learning opportunity is aligned to curricular components and enhances students' understanding of concepts through inquiry-based, hands-on experiences. Pre-K students investigate farm elements and livestock at Hunt Club Farm. They attend live performances at the Sandler Center. They participate in art making through on-site lessons from MOCA. They learn about the importance of oral hygiene through classroom visits from the Virginia Department of Health and they're able to explore animals and habitats at the Virginia Zoo. Pre-K family engagement specialists support families by providing access to the necessary tools and resources needed to be active and engaged partners in their child's education, which is another component of the pre-K program. Examples of their support include chat and choose, which allow families the opportunity to network with community partners and discuss parenting tips are held throughout the school year. Discovery nights, which provide families with literacy and numeracy manipulatives as take home resources are provided each fall and spring. A kindergarten transition event is held in the spring and provides families information on the transition from pre-K to kindergarten. And home visits, conducted by the family engagement specialists build relationships with families and identify possible areas of need. Now that you've heard about the four key areas addressed, let's take a moment to see how our pre-K students are performing. Dr. Hughes will share this information. All right, so in terms of data, Pre-K utilizes the Phonological Awareness and Literacy Screening Tool, also known as the PALS Assessment, to document growth and literacy throughout the pre-K year. In particular, the PALS Assessment looks closely at the components of letter identification, which is an area of instructional focus in pre-K. As shown on the slide, in the fall of 2017, 50% of our pre-K students did not meet the benchmark for letter identification, which is shown in teal while nearly 50% met or exceeded the benchmark, which is shown in blue. In comparison, however, spring 2018 PALS data indicates only 7% of the students did not meet the benchmark, while 93% met or exceeded the letter identification benchmark. This remarkable growth can be attributed to our ability to fund licensed and fully endorsed teachers and a consistent pre-K program built on the four key foundation areas Mrs. Alsop shared earlier in the presentation. In fact, it's important to note that among our current kindergarten students who participated in the VBCPS pre-K program last year, 96.4% of the current kindergarten students demonstrated readiness in the area of reading as indicated by the fall 2017 kindergarten pass assessment. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, pre-K is provided by leveraging multiple funding sources. The local match each year is dependent upon grant requirements. Budget staff works closely with the Virginia Department of Education to determine the local fund match. As the pre-K program continues to grow, the required local match must be budgeted accordingly. At this time, let's hear from staff at Bayside Elementary regarding the impact of pre-K of the pre-K program. 
Joining us tonight are Kathy Brown, principal of Bayside Elementary, and Tracy Taylor, pre-K teacher, who will each spend a few moments discussing the pre-K program at Bayside. Good afternoon. My name is Kathy Brown, and I'm the principal at Bayside Elementary School. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this afternoon and share with you the impact of Virginia Beach City Public Schools pre-K program through the eyes of an administrator. As someone that started teaching their teaching career as a pre-kindergarten teacher, I know the firsthand the importance of laying the foundation for the whole child to include not just a love of learning, but how to work and play with others. I feel that the long-term impacts of the pre-K program will provide equity to all students of different backgrounds. Being that this is our second year of the program, it was the first opportunity our kindergarten teachers had to compare how our pre-K students adjusted to the full-day kindergarten. At the beginning of the year, it was evident which students at Bayside attended the BBCPS pre-K program. As I visited classrooms, students knew how to share, sit on the carpet, unpack their backpacks, get their lunch, socialize with other students, and problem solve with less support from teachers. I'm looking forward to many more years of pre-kindergarten in my building. My greatest wish for our pre-K students is continue to gain a love of learning in a school environment, build their social and emotional skills to play, share, communicate, problem solve, and care about their classmates. I want these skills to carry on with them throughout the school years so that they can build a better world. The pre-K classroom is always one of the classrooms that I take many of our visitors at Bayside Elementary School. As a building principal, I would like to extend an invitation to you, the board, to visit our pre-K classroom as we move into the 2018-19 school year. You'll be sure to witness a learning environment filled with joy, exploration, and excitement. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Taylor and I teach pre-kindergarten at Bayside Elementary School. Prior to teaching pre-K, I taught kindergarten for 22 years. This experience has made me realize the importance of providing a strong foundation to all students, particularly students who have not previously been afforded the opportunity to have access to a quality pre-K experience. Building a school family where kindness is the focal point is one of the most important responsibilities I have as a pre-K teacher. Exposing my students to many academic opportunities remains important. However, by focusing on the students' social development, we would be able to work on their ability to get along with others and function in a variety of social settings. A typical day in a pre-K class is both instructional and intentional. We start each day with a morning meeting where students practice social skills such as oral communication, listening, taking turns, being patient, and being respectful. During the day, we have many opportunities to be together in whole group where we emphasize literacy and math. Most students will tell you their favorite part of the day is workstations. <laughs> students choose a station such as building, science, ABCs, or dramatic play. During this time, students solve problems, cooperate, create, communicate, share, and they take turns, all while engaging in purposeful play. While the students are engaged in their workstations, we work with each student in small groups on specific skills according to the data we have collected. My students' academic growth throughout this year has been tremendous. Most of the students did not know their letters, how to write their names, how to count or even recognize numbers, or have strong, fine motor skills. By the end of the year, all students can count to at least 20, all can write their names and even simple sentences. They can all cut and most know all their upper and lowercase letters. Throughout the year, our focus on our school family has resulted in improvements in friendships, problem solving, communication, listening, patience, and kindness, just to name a few. It's so wonderful to see how they take care of each other. And for me, the best part of teaching pre-K is seeing each student grow academically, socially, and emotionally. And my greatest wish is that each of my students will continue to learn something new each day and be excited to come back to learn more tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. 
There we go. <laughs> okay. So, wait, Amy, do you want to? All right. So now that you've heard from the principal and teacher, let's watch a brief video which highlights spots from a pre-K parent, Sarah Purser, and also two pre-K students, Sincere and Ellie. And I want to make sure Sincere and Ellie have a chance to come to the door to see themselves on the, the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be on TV. <laughs> okay. Pre-K kid. My favorite thing of pre-K is workstation. I like to play with workstation. And we play with all kinds of stuff. We play at the blue station, the yellow station, the red station, the gray station, even the turquoise station, and the magenta station. My sons learned so much. He learned how to cut and color and write his name, and he didn't learn, he didn't know how to do any of those things. The most thing that he talks about is like singing and dancing, and he'll tell me like what words he wrote and like what he learned today. He even can read some words to me, so he'll, I'll read him a book at night, and then he'll be like, Mom, that's run, and I'm like, you're right. I'm so amazing to just watch him grow like that. I don't think if he was at home and I, I was teaching him, I don't think I would have had the patience. I don't think that he would have learned half the stuff as he knows now. I'm very surprised at how much he's learned. It's amazing. I like my teacher. She's great and she's nice. She lets us go to workstations. This is Taylor who teaches me about new stuff. She reads draft can't dance. I can be fair. But Taylor also read sea turtles or a draft. She read, I mean, she read drafts. She read also rhinoceros, lions, tigers. Yeah, real books. I love my letters and numbers. F E N T E R E. I learned that not to learn in the classroom and be nice. I like when she calls me up to learn about something else that I don't know yet. I just think it's amazing. I love coming in the classroom and I love seeing all the kids and watching them grow. They're so wonderful. They've learned so much. Just the amount of stuff he knows, I'm just like, oh my goodness, it's just amazing. BBCPS is committed to its strategic plan to provide high quality instruction and social and emotional development for all of our students. The pre-K program designed for at-risk four-year-olds who may otherwise not be served in quality pre-K programs provides access to educational experiences which lay the foundation for students' future success in school. At this time, I would like the pre-K staff to stand and be recognized.
we figured if there was a glitch in the presentation, it's always good to have a four-year-old. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this time, um, Tina and I will be happy to answer any questions from the board. Are you bringing an application? I know, I'm going to work here too. <laughs> <laughs> we are taking applications, Tina. Would you like to? <laughs> oh. So do you mean for students or adults? We're taking no, applications. For adults. <laughs> <laughs> but we are uh, currently in our enrollment process where families are coming in to submit applications. And we will be notifying parents by the end of July if their students have been uh, selected for the program or if they're on the wait list, because we do usually have a pretty extensive wait list also for our wow. schools. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mr. Edwards? So, <clears throat> we're increasing the number of slots. How many never got off the wait list last year? Uh, I would say roughly maybe about 100 students okay. um, did not get off the wait list last year. Some families, when we called, they may have already found something else. Uh, for their child, or they may have moved uh, out of the area, maybe due to military in there. So it just ranges, I would say, about 100, 150. So the uh, increase in the number of slots should theoretically address a third or a half, maybe, of, of the. Um, and are those, I assume there are more that apply that are found to be not technically eligible. Is that correct or not? There are some apply who aren't eligible, and we have a partnership with various um, community partners, such as Head Start. And so we have a child who doesn't um, qualify for our program, and many times that's for age because we serve four-year-olds, and Head Start takes three- and four-year-olds. Then we partner with them to share names and resources. Those that do apply, is there, I know there's eligibility criteria. Is it you know, like you're either eligible or not, or is there a priority within those who have the greatest need get first shot? Is that correct? Yes, there is a priority. The state gives us four um, main areas first that we look at, income being one of those. Right. Uh, if a family is homeless or if there's a parent that did not complete high school, and then the last criteria is maybe they're over the income, but the student has an IEP. So we do rank the students. And then we also have some local criteria that we also use. Maybe a family doesn't meet one of the four, but it's a military family or single parent family. We do, um, they are eligible also um, for the program. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Melnick. Um, there's a preschool at the tech center. Do you oversee that or is that just, is that a different program? Um, we do not oversee that. That falls under Dr. Pohl's um, um, area, but we partner closely um, with the pre-K program there, and we especially like to give the students there who are overseeing the preschool opportunities to come into our preschool and see what career options would be available for them. Sometimes they want to go to work in a daycare, but once they see our preschool, it gives them you know, a different career path. Excellent. Thank you. We thank you very much. It was a great presentation and we enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I think most of us really enjoyed it. <laughs> you ready? We're ready. Move on. <clears throat> so board members last year members last year you had uh, an overview of the plasma middle schools transition to a whole school MYP program so this is a follow-up conversation to that uh, we'll learn a little bit about how it's going so I guess Amy or James just brief introduction, which Dr. Spence alluded to. Good evening again. And um, as you'll recall, last school year, you heard from the administration at that time, Mr. Burnsworth, um, in a presentation where he described that um, Plaza Middle School would be <coughs> moving from uh, moving to a whole school model, and that would not disrupt the current academy model for MYP, but that it would afford the broader school a number of opportunities. And we let you know that we would come back and report on how that first year had gone. So that's certainly what we're here to do today. You'll hear from Dr. Pohl, our Executive Director of Secondary Teaching and Learning. You'll also um, hear from Mrs. Price, 
and a number of staff and students from the school. And I'd also just like to acknowledge that certainly getting this first year up and running for school-wide implementation has been an outstanding partnership between teaching and learning um, the school, but also the Department of School Leadership, um, Cheryl Woodhouse, and they, the team together have been instrumental in making sure it was a successful first year. And so without further ado, I'm going to give it over to Dr. Paul. Thank you, Dr. Castrell. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Anderson, Vice Chair McDonald, School Board, and Dr. Spence. This afternoon, I'm here with a group of enthusiastic staff and students from Plaza Middle School to update you on the progress of the whole school initiative. I'm joined this afternoon by Ms. Deborah Price, the principal of Plaza Middle School, Ms. Kathy Sussman, our middle years program coordinator at Plaza, as well as a couple of teachers and students will be introduced during the presentation, as well as a couple of parents that are in the audience too. As you may recall, last year we met to share the rationale behind moving Plaza Middle School to whole school MYP model. Today we want to share our progress with you. As a reminder, this journey began as a result of the 2014 MYP evaluation, where our existing model, being a school within a school, was a matter to be addressed. While this was the rationale behind our work, we feel strongly that the MYP curriculum framework, principles, and philosophies are good for all children and that all children will benefit from receiving an MYP education. On this slide is the timeline for implementation to a whole school cohort. We have added year two implementation where the next school year, our seventh graders will become whole school, a whole school cohort. And the following school year, the current sixth graders now will be in eighth grade to make the full implementation complete. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Price to the podium to give the board an overview of this year's progress. Thank you, Dr. Pohl. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Anderson, Vice Chairman McDonald, school board members, and Dr. Spence. Our focus on transformational learning, and specifically student agency, was embraced by our teachers and embedded in the IB MYP units of study. This year, all grade six teachers fully implemented the MYP curriculum framework, and as part of this year's implementation, grade seven teachers had the task of implementing at least one IB MYP unit of study. An example of teachers working together to develop, plan, and implement a whole school unit is a grade seven English unit centered around poverty and oppression in Africa. Students read A Long Walk to Water based on a true story by Linda Sue Park and paired it with nonfiction text to learn about the lack of fresh water and political unrest in villages. Students developed a deeper understanding and cultural perspective of what it is like to live as a child under these circumstances. As a culminating activity, all grade seven students, academy and non-academy, created a museum as a reflection of their learning. Developing IB approaches to learning skills has been an important part of our work this year. These skills, provide a common language that students and teachers use to reflect on the process of learning. They also provide a solid foundation for learning independently and with others. In all grade six social studies classes, IB approaches to learning skills were the foundation of an interdisciplinary unit of study. Within this unit, students had the opportunity to use all of their approaches to learning skills, communication, social, self-management, research, and thinking, and they use these skills in ways that cross content in history, math, and English. At this time, we would like for you to hear from two of our teachers and two of our students to discuss learning examples from the classroom. Sixth grade science teacher Anna Myers and sixth grade student Tony Hill will speak first followed by sixth grade math teacher Charles Alaco and sixth grader Campbell Buell. Good afternoon, school board members and Dr. Spence. My name is Anna Myers, and I am a sixth grade science teacher at Plaza Middle School. Throughout this year, I have experienced many successes as we implemented the new curriculum framework. I have seen my students become more engaged and invested in their own learning process. As a sixth grade teacher, I was able to recognize the immediate benefit of the self-management skill, which is an important piece of student agency. The IB curriculum has encouraged me to more explicitly teach students organization and time management skills. 
communication and collaboration are the two other ATL skills that I was able to grasp easily and connect to student learning. I have been teaching these skills throughout the year during lab experiences, think care shares, and the use of breakout boxes. The IB curriculum encourages students to think beyond facts. In, for example, in our Force in Motion unit, I used the rubric for inquiring and designing that required students to apply their knowledge to an unfamiliar situation. We started with our Hot Wheels lab, where students were exploring force and motion using Hot Wheels as seen in the top picture. Next, they had to use what they learned in the Hot Wheels lab and apply that to a hypothetical situation. Students were given a performance task where they had to explore whether or not mass impacts force through a provided scenario. We also had them examine different types of surfaces that might change the speed of an object, and they developed a lab to investigate how or why the surface might have an impact. Through applying their knowledge to these unfamiliar situations, students are better able to demonstrate their full understanding um, of the concepts and to transfer their learning in a meaningful way. This year has also been a learning experience for me as a teacher. This past summer, I attended an IB authorized training. The, experience was a, the training was a great experience for me to collaborate with my colleagues, and to learn more about the IB curriculum. At the training, we were able to plan an IB unit in its entirety. From this training experience, we as teachers learned to collaborate in better ways. As an example, the bottom picture shows sixth grade science teachers looking for a way to um, embed work with Spiros in our force and motion unit. Thank you. I would now like to introduce one of my students, Tony Hill. Good afternoon, school board members and Dr. Spence. As an NYP student, we have worked to develop skills that are important to becoming better learners and citizens. One way our teachers have helped us do this is by teaching us to use the IB learner profile traits. One trait is to be a thinker, and our teachers have helped us use this by, do this by giving us challenging problems and asking us to figure them out. For example, we have worked to design our own science lab based on questions we want to answer. The smart doesn't give us the best of instructions, but expects us to come up with a plan ourselves. The top figure shows a student working on designing an experiment with scientific observation. We've also been focused on becoming better communicators in our classes. We can we can learn this trait by working in groups with their classmates and talking through what are about talking through our ideas about what we are learning. A really great thing was when author Kwame Alexander came to our school. I seen in the top right picture to talk to us about his books and how he communicates his thoughts and feelings through poetry and music. Another important trait is being reflective. We use this trait when we look at results from the science lab and how we did on tests and making a plan to improve. The bottom left picture shows students reflecting on student projects and giving feedback to each other. The bottom right shows me reflecting on the test I took and figuring out where my mistakes were and how I could get even better. I look forward to seventh grade knowing that we will continue to learn about these traits and get even better at using them. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Mr. Lockwood and Campbell Peel. Thank you, Tony. Hello, members of the board and Dr. Spence. My name is Charles Delacco. I'm a sixth grade math teacher at Plaza Middle School. Thank you for having my colleagues, my students, and myself here today to talk with you about the NYP implementation process. One unit of study that stands out to me is when students work together to create a presentation on researching the population levels of various animal species found throughout the Virginia Beach, Chesapeake Bay area. Included in their presentation was a mapping system developed by the students and inspired by the coordinate plane that would inform scientists how to move a drone from one, area pop from one animal population to the next. The picture on the left shows a student posing as a marine animal with a, drawing, a drone flying overhead. The top center shows our students watching the drone fly to various points on the football field to help them visualize how the drone flies, much like we move over and up on a coordinate grid. The pictures on the right and bottom center show students in the analysis phase of the unit. Throughout this unit, students were able to exhibit the three, three different IB learner profile skills, knowledgeable, thinker, and caring. Students began to understand that these skills were important outside of the classroom too, and could eventually yield consequences, both good and bad, in their own lives. The IB program challenged me as an educator to think differently so that I could help others do the same. It helped create a framework of inquiry for a unit that otherwise could be mastered through mundane and rote activities. Students were able to see that the scale of what they were learning extended far beyond the classroom. These are important global skills that can help students make a positive impact on the world. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you about the implementation process. I'd now like to introduce one of my students, Candace Jewell. Good afternoon, school board members and Dr. Spence. I'm here to tell you about my first year as an NYB student. One of my favorite projects was the drone project that we did in Mr. Locko's class. 
I liked it because I felt it was real world and I actually had to save the animals using what I learned with the coordinate grip. Being able to watch the drone fly on the football field helped me visualize the X and Y axes and move into the different coordinates. I know I am a visual learner and it just helped everything make sense. Another activity I liked was in social studies where we learned about the gold rush and we were put in situations that the actual pioneers faced as they moved west. My teacher put us in groups and we tracked our progress as teams based on goals we set for tests and other classroom activities. This really helped us focus on goal setting for our grades and being responsible for our own learning. The top left picture shows students talking about the gold rush situations and the bottom right shows a group tracking their progress. Because of the NYP approaches to learning, I feel I have a much bigger growth mindset than before. At the beginning of the year, we learned about those skills and identified which ones we felt we were good at and which ones we needed to work on. The bottom left shows me reading the ATL skills and deciding where I was with each one. This year has been very different than elementary school because I feel we went more in depth with our learning. I also like that we got to learn a language. I took French this year and because I took exploring French, I'm ready to take French one next year. And now I will turn it back over to Ms. Price. <laughs> Thank you to our students and our teachers. Beyond the classroom walls, we are becoming more community-minded as, as they, our students are becoming more community-minded as they work to make their community a better place. This year, students participated in the polar plunge at the oceanfront where they raised over $21,000. Plaza raised the most money of any middle school. This service opportunity has become a whole school project where in the past only academy students participated. Other service projects included the SEA food drive baskets for Thanksgiving and Socktober where students collected thousands of pairs of socks for the homeless. Through projects such as these, students are learning to be aware of their own strengths and areas of growth. They're learning how to undertake challenges and develop new skills, how to work collaboratively and how to have empathy for others, and how, even as middle schoolers, they can impact the world around them. In addition to the increased focus on service learning, we have been focusing on our community awareness and making the NYP language and framework more visible. Every opportunity we get, we share with parents and the community who we are and the purpose of IB learning. We have aligned our PBIS framework with the IB learner profile traits. We revised our school's mission statement to embed the language of NYP. All publications and information packets, packets proudly include the IB logo and language. As we move forward to next year's continuing implementation, it is important to note that our NYP Academy structure will not change. Students from around the division will continue to have the opportunity to apply for and attend the academy, and it will remain the rigorous program it has always been. As we continue developing units, service learning will be an important part of that process. We will embed opportunities into the curriculum for students to advocate for causes that they are passionate about, to raise awareness of important issues around the world, and to work to help others. Grade 7 will enter their first year of implementation. Students will continue to engage in real-world inquiry-based learning where the emphasis is on concepts as opposed to just facts and skills. The units will be centered around a global context and will allow <coughs> students to set goals for their learning, reflect on their achievement in meeting their goals, and have choice in, de in determining their learning pathway. Grade 8 will begin the journey by implementing one NYP unit next year, preparing them for full implementation in the year 2019-2020. Professional learning will continue to be a focus at our school. All teachers, including electives, will have the opportunity to participate in two days of training at Plaza Middle this summer. We will have three tiers of readiness among our, among our teachers and ensure each teacher receives training based on their readiness level. This year has been a year of growth, a year of learning, and a year of reflection. As we continue this journey, we will continue with the goal of developing inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people. As we conclude this first year, we wholeheartedly embrace the fact we are an IB World School. Dr. Paul.
Thank you, Ms. Price. Thank you, Ms. Meyer, Mr. Alaco, uh, Tony, and Campbell. Wonderful job. Also, I'd like to thank the board for your ongoing support of this important work. As was presented last year, all needed professional development funds have been accounted for out of the current academy budget to support this ongoing effort. There are no additional funds being requested for professional development. As we move into whole school implementation, we will work closely. At, we will look closely at any additional staffing needs that may arise, <coughs> due to all students having the opportunity for three electives. We will work with Mrs. Woodhouse during budget season next year if any needs may arise. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to present on the progress of this implementation. At this time, we're prepared to answer any questions you may have. Do we have any questions? I don't have a question, but I just. Ms. Melnick, I just wanted to say that this certainly proves that when you give students the tools, they certainly do respond, don't they? Absolutely. This was, this was great. You guys, the, the teachers and the students did a great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One question. You brought up the component about sharing with the parents of the community. Could you elaborate on how, you said some of the parents are in the audience, could you elaborate on how that component worked with this program? We um, share it at our open houses. We start with that with our rising sixth graders. We talk about what the program is, what the curriculum framework looks like, and the advantages for students, what it's going to look like with their learning. Um, we also send home a weekly newsletter to parents, and I'll include some IP pieces in there as well. So how would you say this working with your parents in your community? Is it a good I think it's an ongoing process. I don't know that we're fully there yet, um, but as we move year by year, I think it will become part of the, it is becoming part of the culture. One of the things we did with our PVIS, um, um, we did positive referrals and students would, it would be one of the IB learner profile traits and we would mail those home to parents when a student received a positive referral. So that information is going home that way as well. Thank you, that's great. All right, any others? Thank you, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Mr. McDonald, um, at this time, would you read us, read the motion for us to go into close? Madam Chairwoman, I move that the <coughs> board recess into a closed meeting to go to the exemption from open meeting law by section 2.237.11, part A, paragraph 3, to put Virginia in 1950. As amended for real property, discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or the disposition of publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursuant to section 2.237.11a3, namely to discuss sale of school board owned property in the Princess Anne district. Second. So it's been moved and seconded that we go into close. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Due to the time, that means we get to stay in here for the close. Okay, so we will begin as soon as Ms. Alexander comes back.